<laughs> hey guys, Jeremy here with Majors Academy Dog Training, and today I want to talk to you guys about the prong collar. Now there's uh, there's there's certain rumors out there about the prong collar that it's uh, you know it damages dogs, you know um, it's inhumane. Well, I'm here to tell you that if used correctly, it's actually the opposite. It's actually one of the most safest tools we use we can use out there for your dog and the most humane tool if used correctly if you have a dog that is lunging barking and biting at other dogs pulling on leash um, then uh, I recommend that you get the prong collar and consult a professional because uh, we usually get all of those behaviors to be able to improve with the prong collar and the techniques that we use within one session. So here's the prong collar. And you can get the correct prong collar according to your dog's size. Um, I recommend the brand Herm Springer. It's, uh, it's what we use, it's been pretty good for us. So um, the other thing to notice, to note about these prongs is that they have a round tip. See how they have that round finish? There are prong collars out there that have a flat finish. Um, so kind of stay away from those. I, I recommend the ones with the round tip. Okay? And so the cool thing about the prong collar is, is that it distributes pressure around the dog's neck um, very evenly. And so I'm going to kind of show you how we use the prong collar. So see, so the prong collar is on and the leash is on right here so when we're pulling when we correct a dog it's just this okay and it's distributing pressure all around all all around the dog's neck as opposed to just the trachea so we're just correcting just like this and then relaxing this is communication to the dog just like this this is valuable communication um, making the dog choose whether or not he wants to feel the correction or not and once he realizes that the choices he makes if he decides to pull he gets corrected um, if he decides to lunge he'll get a correction or a bite the dog will start to realize that I don't need to do this um, because I'll get corrected if I don't I mean if I get corrected I'll get corrected if I do so the flat buckle collar is on you have a flat buckle collar and when the dog decides to pull you can't really change their state of mind and look where all the pressure is. All the pressure is on that neck right here. So you'll hear a dog go <coughs> be choking, pulling because the, all the pressure is right on the trachea and it could cause some future, uh, some future damage to that trachea, am trachea area. So fitting the prong collar, um, these links are actually removable so you can remove them relatively easy if you need to like that um, this you will need to do this if your dog if uh, the prong collar is too loose what we want with the prong collar is to be really up high on the neck like so right up here and it doesn't slide down so take out as many prong collars as you need or as many prongs as you need um, to achieve a prong collar that stays up there on its own and doesn't come down here because we don't want the prong collar down here by the shoulders this is kind of where all the power of the dog is uh, right down by the shoulders so um, take, a many, take out as many links as possible to achieve uh, the prong collar just being able to sit up here nice and high it'll give you much uh, more resistance from the dog if the higher the prong collar is. So once you have your once you have your prong collar fit on your dog, uh, nice and snug up on the neck, then to take it off, you always go to the end of it like so, and then just kind of put your thumb here and push down, just like that, and then putting it back on you just kind of squeeze the tips and put it on just like this. Show you once again. So 
put the tip of your thumb on the tip of the prong, pull it down, and then in order to put it back, just kind of squeeze, put it back, just like that, nice and easy.